Daily Graphic this morning says inclusive democracy wins as Professor Opokwajiman says of nomination. EC sticks to voter registration and Kolebu suspends non-emergency surgeries as they close portions of uh, their place down because uh, some staff have been infected by COVID-19. Also, the Ghanaian Times says president not flown out of the country. Jubilee House dismisses rumors that the president is being flown out for self-isolation that he said he is embarking on based on medical advice. Also, Parents besiege Accra girls SHS over COVID-19 scare, demand release of the awards. Charles has promised to keep the children safe. How they're going to do that, they haven't said. But Mahama picks running mate at last. It's Professor Nana Jeno Pokwajiman and uh, President Lords Valentina Minter's ICC appointment. A daily guide. Mahama picks Nana for NDC VIP. Mona faces Supreme Court contempt. And uh, Gabby wades into the Melovo Crawl case. That's what we find on the front page. The Finder newspaper, over 2.2 million voters registered in first six days of phase one. 68.9% uh, used uh, Ghana cards, according to Dr. Sribo Kwaku, who is the uh, Director of Electoral Services at the Electoral Commission. Also, Mahama picks Professor Nana Opokwajiman and significant improvement in social distancing at registration centre as the EC goes on to uh, have a scheme there, a special queuing scheme with their uh, chit system. The BNFT is our final one. It says, Ghana is behind you, President assures Valentina Minta after she was appointed at the International Criminal Court. And also, uh, the um, borders must open with extreme caution. Professor Quarte of Ise uh, is telling government. Government to reposition manufacturing to lead post-COVID-19 economic revival. My guest this morning via Zoom, as you know, we are uh, taking cognizance of the times. So we're going via Zoom. Is Kamal Dean Abdullah, he's a Deputy National Communications Director of the NPP. And also will join us later will be Sam Okujetua Blackwa, his MP for North Tongue and also a member, ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Kamal, good to see you. You look great. How are you doing? I'm terrific, Johnny. It's, 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 it's been a while. And, of course, observing the protocols as laid down, um, I believe you guys are all safe. And mm. um, You have really distanced yourself from us, we can, we can tell. Hello, Kamal. Well, it's uh, technology right there. It's freezing, but we'll try and reconnect with Kamal shortly. But this morning, well. uh, top of, of, the, of the day will be the appointment of Madame Jean, uh, Jean Nana Opokwajima, Professor Jean Nana Opokwajima. Kamal, welcome. What do you quickly uh, make of the appointment of uh, Jean, uh, Madame, Madame Jean Nana Opokwajima, Professor, as a running mate for the NDC's John Mahama going into the 2020 elections? Hello, Kamal? Yes. Kamal, did you get my question? Hello, Kamal? Well, I see you have we're having challenges now. Let's take a, a break. When we return, I'm sure we can find a mojo. Uh, it, it, we don't provide the internet. The internet comes from somewhere. Let's, uh, let's move on. But first, uh, take a listen to... Uh, the profile put together by the your election command center of Professor Nana Jeno Pukwajiman first and then we'll come back to the conversations. Born on November 22, 1951 in Cape Coast, Nana Jeno Pukwajiman, a fanti from Commander, attended basic school at Anglican Girls School in Koforidia and a Bree Presby Girls School. She then proceeded to Wesley Girls High School in Cape Coast from 1964 to 1971 for her secondary education. She completed a Bachelor of Education Honours in English and French at the University of Cape Coast in 1977 and obtained her Master's Degree from the York University in Toronto, Ontario, Canada in 1980 and her Doctorate from the same university in 1986. Professor Opukwajiman taught and worked at the University of Cape Coast from 1986. She held various academic positions, including the head of Department of English, the Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Warden of Adeshe Hall, Valco Trust Fund Postgraduate Hostel, and the Dean of School of Graduate Studies and Research. From 1997, she has held the position of Academic Director of School of International Training in the History and Cultures of the African Diaspora. 
From 2008 to 2012, she was the university's vice chancellor. In March 2007, she was one of the five scholars selected to deliver presentations during the 200th anniversary of the abolition of slavery at the United Nations headquarters in New York. In October 2009, she was elected Ghana's representative to the executive board of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. Ahead of the 2012 general elections, Jane Opokwajiman moderated the debate with Kojo Opong Nkrumah. Between February 2013 and January 2017, she served as the education minister. On 26 October 2018, she became the chancellor of the Women's University in Africa, located in Zimbabwe. She has served on many local and international boards and committees, like the Center for Democratic Development, CDD Ghana, the editorial board of the Harriet Tubman series on the African diaspora, the African World Press Incorporated USA, the African Initiative in Canada, and the College of Physicians and Surgeons as eminent citizen. She is the first female vice chancellor of a public university in Ghana, where she assumed duty on October 1, 2008, and a former education minister. She was appointed in 2013 by the then President John Dramani Mahama after the 2012 general elections and served until January 2017 when the Nana Akufado led NPP administration was elected to power. Professor Opokwajiman has been honored with honorary degrees from the University of West Indies and Winston Salem University. She has also received an award for global leadership from the University of South Florida in Tampa. She has also received the Officer of the Order of the Volta Award for Academic Distinction and Ghana Women of Excellence Award in Education category. She has been acknowledged for outstanding performance in advancing international education, School for International Training, Vermont, USA, on two occasions. She is the current African Board Chairperson of the Forum for African Women Educationists, FAWE. And that was the profile of Professor J. Nano Pukwajman, the brand new vice presidential candidate uh, selected by Prof, uh, John Dramani Mahama, ex-president, to run along with him on the 7th of December. Uh, it will be about four months away from now, exactly on this day, you will be making that decision. But Kamal, welcome back uh, from, from it. I'm sure we can have a clean feed at this point. I'm asking what your Thank thoughts you. are initially of uh, the selection of Professor J. Nano Pukwajman as running mate Well, um, um, once again, good morning to your cherished viewers, and good morning to you as well and your partner, I mean, your, 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 your co-workers, as you say. Um, of course, it didn't come as a surprise to me in a way. Once we had um, her name being part of uh, the names that we had all over on the um, social media, and if you like, some parts of the traditional media, as it were, um, of, again, she, she, she's not someone who is not known to us in the Ghanaian politics, as it were. Um, clearly, we all know that she's been a minister before. We all know that she's been with the NDC fraternity before, and she's, as it were. Um, what many um, say it has come to encourage inclusive and if you like participatory democracy, is what surprises me. I mean, this is the first time we're getting a woman to be chosen as a running mate to a particular flag bearer or a flag bearer in this country. We've had series of women, Ivaloko, the likes of Ivaloko, and all that, have had the opportunity of um, serving as running mate mm. to, if you like, um, flag bearers in this country. So it is not the first time we're getting a woman in that position. As right. well. I mean, even if we have to make such argument. I mean, the president now mm. has strongly that indeed he's somebody who believes in this um, gender issues and has empowered many women 
I mean, under his watch, we've had the chief justice being a woman. We've had, um, currently, we have the chief of staff mm -hmm. of the Republic of China being a woman. So, mm. of course, if we talk about participatory democracy, inclusive democracy, and all that, and making sure gender issues are indeed adhered to, mm. I mean, without a doubt, the president of the Republic of Ghana has also held that in high esteem. Okay, now, come on. I, I'm interested in finding out from you yesterday what you also make your party. Uh, communications director went out there yesterday uh, listing some of the faults, that, if you will, of uh, Jane Anna Opokwajima while she was at the Education Ministry, the cancellation of uh, some uh, allowances for teachers and the lack of chalk and all of that. And I'm here thinking, was that the best way to welcome uh, a woman into the free, especially when we've been talking about uh, participation, inclusive democracy, and also making available 30% of your appointments from your president, our president, for available for women? Is that the best way to welcome such if, a candidate? If, if, if you're listening to my director of communication yesterday, there is nowhere in the statement that he sought to downplay, you know, including women or getting women to be part of our political, if you like, atmosphere. No, he never sought to do that. What he sought to do was that, yes, we welcome whoever the flag bearer of the NDC has chosen. It brings to fore our participatory democracy we're all talking about. Mm -hmm. However, the person in question, Professor Jane Nano Kukwajima, mm -hmm. who is she? Who do we know she is? Okay, we all know in recent past he's, she was the Minister for Education as it were. And of course, as Minister for Education, her mm. stewardship ought to be looked into when right. she was there. Okay. What was her form of leadership? What did she do? Mm. What were the events that occurred under her watch mm -hmm. as a minister? <laughs> this is exactly what my director of communication sought to do, but not to downplay the choosing, I mean, the choice made by uh, uh, GM or John Dramani Mahama, mm. okay, because she's also a woman. No, it had to do with the fact that. Has she played a role as a state person in this country before? Yes, she was a minister of state. And when she was a minister of state, mm. were there occasions, were there occasions where we had things that happened in this country that mm. were not palatable? Mm -hmm. And of course, we mentioned all those things that were not palatable. For example, talking about the scrapping of the allowances right. and making sure that indeed teachers were not also paid um, their full salary when they had worked for three years and they were paid only for three months under her watch. Mm. Her own handing over notes speaks to it. These were statements of facts made by the director of communication of my party, mm. um, Honorable Yabwabia Samoa. And I believe that these are not, I mean, these were statements of facts, and mm. these were not conjectured by him. These were not issues that he created himself, but these were to tell Ghanaians that indeed, this is the kind of woman GM has chosen for us, or this is the kind of person GM has chosen for us. I don't think it was um, out of place for him to, okay. as it were, come out, or he was trying to downplay um, a woman as a choice. Not come a out. It, working by that principle, then, would you rather uh, put the same principle to work? For example, Professor Jane Anopokwajiman was a minister of state serving under a president and a vice president. Now, in the December election, she will come head to head with a vice presidential candidate who is also the head of the economic management team, and we can all tell what the performance of the city against the major currencies have been, and other failings of the economy that would then fall squarely at the table of the vice president. If we apply that same principle, do you think Dr. Baumia will weigh heavily on the scale if we put them side by side? Um, um, Johnny, let us, let us be factual and let us be honest to ourselves. The figures are there to prove. Facts are sacred, and we all know that. Mm. As we speak today, when you juxtapose the economic indicators that we have today, two economic indicators that we had just in the X-File administration of JN, okay, that when we took over, clearly you would agree with me that indeed we have positive indicators so well now mm. than then. Mm. Our economy, even though we, have, we are facing this crisis of COVID, we still have at least a resilient economy in terms of the indicators that we have on the table. Clearly look at it. So mm. when you tell me that we are going to look at the performance of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as the vice president and head of economic management team now, mm. and then juxtapose C 
to the last administration of GM, mm. which we took over from, as it were. You would agree with me that we have performed better, far, far better in terms of managing this economy mm. than what they did. Well, you're, you're, lumping, you're lumping the whole system together, but you're happy to, to vet the potential and the capabilities and performance of a minister for education and list one or two things that she didn't do right. And I'm saying that on that score and on that principle, let's put her head to head with a vice president. Of course, she now becomes a vice presidential candidate of a vice president who made a lot of promises, who is the head of the economic management team. And we all do know beyond what is on the paper, the economy is not pocket friendly. Should we use the same measure to judge Vice President Baumia, not the entire government, should we? This, 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 this analogy you are, this analogy you are given and you are seeking to, um, if you like, give for us to use as a basis for argument, whether or not she is well placed or Dr. Baumia is well placed. My point here is that Dr. Al Haji Mahmoud Baumia, before he became the running mate to Nana Adodanka Kufado, and subsequently becoming the vice president, wasn't a minister in the first place. Mm. And did not have, he was a, a deputy, you know, if you like, um, head at the Bank of Ghana, mm. which we all know, and you know how creditably he came out to perform, or how indeed he stood out in that particular um, institution. Mm. That notwithstanding, come to when he became the running mate, and then come to when he became the vice president. And of course, that's giving him about the state, in terms of the economic management team, mm. in terms of making sure things go on well. I make a point clearly that, look, it is a known fact that our economy has gone better. And come on, of come on. Has grown better. Come on, hold, yes. your, hold your horses. Let's uh, welcome Sam Okujeto Black, who's joining us via phone as well. He's the member of parliament for North Tongue. He's also the ranking member for foreign affairs, and his former boss is now the, uh, the woman in charge of the vice presidential slot. We'll come to you, Sam. Good morning. How are you doing? Hi, good morning, Johnny. I'm fine. How about you? Alive and well. We'll come to you shortly, but come out. Take this final question from me. So the Vice President of the Republic, and again, I'll stay back on the principle that you used, yeah. that it was Professor Jane Opukwajiman who was in charge of education, and so all the failings regarding the issues of education or in the education sector should be placed at their doorstep. You claim that the economy is done better, but the Vice President, who she now goes to face on the 7th of December, told us that he had arrested the CD, locked it up in jail, and given the key to former IGP, Apietu. As we know right now, the CD has not done any better against the dollar. Should we again apply the same principle you seek to apply yesterday at the press conference addressed by your communications director in this instance? Should we? Well, you, 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 well, you have chosen to say that um, or single out the performance of the CD. Okay, in a holistic view, let's look at only the performance of the city. Now, I chose earlier on to tell you that, look, look holistically the performance of the economy. You are giving an economy to manage. You are giving series of areas to manage. Indeed, you have proven that indeed where we are today, we have a resilient economy irrespective of the crisis that we find ourselves in. This tells you, this tells you that the job given to that man has actually been done and seen to be done well. Now you say, let's single out only the city. And if the city is not performing well, then it means that it's a total failure. No. Yesterday, if you listen to the director of communication for the New Patriotic Party, my boss, Yabwabi Asamwa, he did not just single out the scrapping of the allowances meant for trainee teachers or trainee nurses. He chronicled events that points to the fact that, look, this is the kind of woman we are having as the running mate to um, jail. Of course, she was a minister, and under her word, that happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. That... And I said again, these were statements of facts. Teachers had cause to complain. Trainee teachers had cause to complain. Indeed, under her word, she herself had said that, look, captation grant, they fell short to pay more. Under her word, she had said that indeed we had a lot of problems within the educational sector mm -hmm. where she was heading or where she was a minister. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the point that we, we tried to drum home yesterday. Okay. okay. Now, okay. if you are saying that, look, if you are saying that because the city has fallen, then of course let's zero that to mean that 
the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana as head of economic management team has also failed. Of course, that's your thinking. I mean, that's what we want. You're running away that's from your own principle. I, I'm, not, I'm not running away from the principle. But I'm saying that look at the economy of Ghana now, Johnny. Mm. Look at the economy of Ghana now. The indicators we have, both macro and micro, where are we as a country? Are okay. we doing better? Let, let's we healed? Let, let me heal. Yes, let's move on. Let me welcome Ablakwa and we can go on with it. I'll give it back. Uh, Ablakwa, welcome. Thank you for your time. Right. Thank you very much. Your, your former boss has been chosen to partner John Mahama in the uh, December elections. Uh, this should be good news for you. It does, some say the NDC have put their money where their mouth is. But what went into this choice? Well, thank you very much. And uh, regards to all our distinguished viewers. Uh, certainly uh, an exciting decision, a refreshing one, very historic. Uh, President John Dramani Mahama, uh, His Excellency, uh, as, as he then was, and now flag bearer and leader of our party, has shown that he is truly committed uh, to inclusive democracy and that uh, he is interested in people of substance, people who have a track record, people who are not just noise makers. Mm -hmm. If you look at the entire life of Professor Jainana Opoku Ajiman, she is a doer, she's an achiever, she's a go getter, she is resource oriented, she is somebody who is interested in just getting the job done. It's not about the noise, the razzmatazz, the thrills, the frills, uh, the hunky punky. It's, it's all not about that. It's just about being quietly focused, mm -hmm. being serious, being respectful, being decent, and getting the job done. She's dedicated over three decades of her life to molding generations of national leaders. And you talk to her students who have gone through her hands. You have seen already the feedback from all over the world. Some of her students who are now professors in other countries. You have seen the tribute they have paid. I mean, this is one, I don't recall in our history when a, a nomination receives such international acclaim. Mm. The reports in the New York Times, Bloomberg, BBC, CNN, all over the place. They're talking about this appointment, and, and, and the international community mm -hmm. has so well received this, 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 this nomination. And it's because they know her. She is internationally renowned. I mean, to be invited to serve on the UNESCO Council, to be invited to serve as the chancellor mm -hmm. of the Women's University in Africa, based in Harare, Zimbabwe, to be invited to chair the Federation of African Women Educationalists, mm. headquartered in, Harad, in, in, in Nairobi, Kenya. I mean, this is somebody who is of international repute, a fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. Mm. She has received the highest award uh, the Ghanaian state can offer, the okay. Order of the Vota, for academic distinction. Some, some, so some, some, someone this, would ask, this, well, this, she has the yeah. credentials, she has... Uh, the appeal, she has the academic laurels, she's won awards, shaped minds, but does that win elections? Absolutely, it does. It does. I mean, uh, when the electorate go to vote, they are looking for competence. They are looking for somebody who makes them proud, mm. somebody who is a role model, somebody they can entrust. Look, you will not leave your children, Johnny, if you mm. are busy, you have some assignment somewhere, you have to uh, uh, send your children somewhere for for, for caretaking. Mm. You will be interested in who those people are or your friends are, what's their background. You're not certainly going to leave your little girl to somebody who probably has a history uh, in, 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 in molesting mm -hmm. or who, who, who cannot just take care of, of, of little ones. So Every electorate and every country, they look out for competence. They look out for somebody who has a solid track record, who has standing credentials, mm. who, who they know that when they leave the country in their hands, the resources of this country, they can make the right decisions and they can advance the course of the country. And that is why all of these credentials matter when we talk about people who are competent, people mm -hmm. who have vision, people who have experience, who have track record, who have the, 
uh, the, the temperament. It is all of these things that go into it. Okay. Because without these qualities, mm. you will not rise to become a vice chancellor, the first female vice chancellor mm. of a public university. Okay. You will not be invited to be chancellor of the African Women's University. You will not be asked to chair FAWE. You would not be invited as a fellow of mm. the Academy of Arts and Science. It requires a certain you know, expertise, some okay. demonstrable qualities, which everybody... Okay. Recognizes and appreciates. Great. And if so, you look at so, if, effort, if, so if I get you some, so, sorry. Every position she has held. Mm -hmm. Look, when she was Minister of Education, look at the conversion of polytechnics to technical universities. I mean, amazing concept other countries have come to adapt and they are implementing in their, their jurisdictions. If you look at what she did mm -hmm. in migrating the colleges of education to become tertiary institutions, abolishing the quota system, making sure that enrollment shot up from 9,000 to 15,400 mm. to creating more opportunities for young people. Okay. If you so I'm sure, Sam, I'm sure we can go... He did not say that Sam. teachers... I'm, I'm sure we. Right line, such an I'm, I'm sure we can go on and on about her credentials, what she achieved at the ministry. But yesterday, I'm sure you also had Mr. Yababian Samoa, who's uh, communications director of the NPP, in a welcome press conference, uh, listing some of her faults. And uh, they say that, for example, you cannot have these faults and still hope to shine as vice presidential candidate. How does the NDC take this welcome press conference? Was it the best? Was it not? That press conference, Johnny, you know in your heart of hearts that it was hardly organized, it was needless, it was a disaster. I mean, I've seen respected uh, senior citizens like KSM, mm. you know, use very harsh words for that press conference. I've seen a lot of gender uh, activists mm. say that that press conference was totally in bad taste and was uncalled for. The MPP is refusing to learn. I mean, look, the are in no mood for this old-fashioned politics of name-calling, mm of insults, of attacks. Mm. I mean, that is what Professor Nana Jinopukwajiman brings to the table. The politics of decency, the politics of death, of gravitas, mm. where you are deliberate, constructive, mm. where you focus on the issues and not about personality attacks. I mean, look at that person. How can you say that uh, President Mahama does not take Ghanaians serious? And that is why he will appoint somebody like Professor Nanaji of I mean, how, how, how dare you? Aren't we all proud of our mothers? And aren't, aren't, aren't we all honored by the history that we have made? And as mm. Professor Nanaji of said in her acceptance statement, it's not a personal victory. She sees this as our collective victory, victory for mm. inclusive, mm. participatory democracy. So, I mean, and, and look at the things there. They wouldn't even get their facts right. They say she comes with book and research allowance. It's not true. Book and research allowance was always paid during her tenure. And the 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 the, 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 the release documents have been have been have been put out. The authorization document to controller authorizing that payments of book and research allowance should be but, made. But you cancel teachers' allowance. Have been put out. But they you cancel teachers' she, allowance. They claim that she yeah, hello. But you cancel teachers' allowances. That's what they're saying. You fail to provide chalk, which uh, Mrs. Matilda and Ms. Hata uh, told the teachers in their face. Chalk, the am Mamubi. Uh, and, and those were the things they're talking about. It, it, it's a, a block. A, 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 a desperate opponent clutching at straws. Look, the reforms at the colleges, so go there. You open your phone lines and talk to teacher trainees today. Today, They will tell you that they prefer... Professor Nana Jinobukwajima's policies. I've been there recently to, to receive a rousing welcome. They prefer the abolishing the quota system where you open up space for teacher trainees. Okay. They prefer you ensuring that all graduates are posted directly, not mm -hmm. asked to go and do national service, not asked to go and write a licensure exam when they have graduated and been certified by UCC that they are qualified, trained teachers. They prefer... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, a situation where they received feeding grants from government mm -hmm. and their school fees were far lower than they are paying now, where they, they, would, they would take student loans, but they would immediately be employed when they graduate, have the dignity of work, and so can pay those student loans. Okay. Uh, policies have now been understood mm -hmm. that look, the colleges have been upgraded. R wrap up for me. Wrap up so Kamaka can have a bite. So, so, so her, her, what they... They are seeking to beat her 
uh, up with as, 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 as negative, as rather positive. Take another attack on her, that uh, three months uh, payment policy. That was a policy from the Ministry of Finance to check for, to address the issue of post payment. Mm. So everybody is paid three months because we know it takes minimum three months to be paid. But after, auditors come and do a validation. When you show your documentation that you have indeed worked for six months or seven months, then mm. you are paid. And I believe that if those uh, safeguards had not been put in, okay. the same people will say that she came and wasted and dissipated uh, taxpayers' money. So look, impeccable track record. She is unblemished. Thank you. She can't find any, not a whimper of a scandal mm. or any adverse finding against her in any uh, uh, office she has. Ah, thank you. She ah, thank you. As a serious pair of hands, somebody who really uh, takes her job, you know, uh, seriously. Ah, thank you. Ah, thank you very much. And really, this, mm. this is rather, you know, needless. Ah, thank you, uh, Sam. Which has Grateful, Sam. I thank you very much. Uh, 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 come on. So, Sam is eulogizing his former <laughs> boss and actually saying that you have no debt on the woman. You are envious of her capabilities. She's a competent pair of hands. And what you did yesterday in press conference is shambolic, it's embarrassing, and even quotes KSM. Do you still stand by what was said yesterday? Well, well, Sam or Honorable Sam um, Ablapa to come out and say otherwise, okay, or say things that, of course, would not appear palatable against the person of um, Professor Nana Jim um, Why not? I mean, they all belong to the same fraternity. They all belong to the same political party. They believe in the same ideology, as it were. And she's his work under her as well. So I expect all these, you know, um, positive comments coming from him mm. about um, the woman. But nonetheless, I still stay on my point that yesterday's press conference did not attack the person of Madame Jane. No, it you... sought to tell Ghanaians mm. mm. what she did as a minister in charge of education. And, and you added, she... and you added that and... if if President Mahama was serious. He wouldn't appoint such a person as vice presidential candidate, and they find it of unfortunate. Course, of course, her delivery, her delivery as a minister was what we were alluding to. Her delivery as a minister, as someone who headed an institution or a ministry that was supposed to oversee the future of the young ones in this country. Clearly, you tell me that today, as we said, Teacher trainees are not happy because their allowance has been restored. Surely you would tell me they are happy. You would tell me again that today, teaching and learning materials that we need in the various basic schools or elementary schools or running up to whichever level in education, which today we have in abundance and we have them well given. Under her watch, nothing like that was seen. So was that not a failure? It was a failure. And these were the pointers that were given. So if somebody says somewhere to say that, look, ooh, the, the, the press conference was uncalled for, it was an attack on women, or it was an attack on the, her person, I think it's unfortunate. Clearly unfortunate. We stayed put on where we needed to point the records out to let people understand that, look, this is the kind of woman who is going to partner. Well, was it necessary? <laughs> was it necessary at the time when everybody was jubilating right. to be finding fault right, right, right at the start? Right. Very necessary. Very necessary, very necessary. She brings on board a particular ticket. Okay, she comes on board a particular ticket, which is seeking to, as it were, get the mandate from Ghanaians to rule. And we are saying that, look, we need to hold everybody in check. If she is the one chosen, who is that person? Let's tell Ghanaians who she is, or remind Ghanaians who she is, as it were. Then someone says it's uncalled for. We're not supposed to do that. I mean, it doesn't lie with Honorable Ablakwa to tell the MPP, uh, okay, which press conference to hold and which one not to hold, as it were. Don't, don't, you, don't you think, Kamal, yes. Kamal, don't you think that for uh, the akufado led government that says we will reserve 30% of our appointments for women, uh, for that same party to be making such statements in the very early days, a statement that some women have said would repel women who are competent, 
qualified and capable, have perhaps the same qualifications or even better than Professor Nana Jenopoku Ajiman to stay at the back and not step forward to be counted on the political and governance landscape, don't you think? Johnny, Johnny, I said this earlier on, that we are not against the choice of a woman, not at all. And I even went further to say that, look, the president we have today is somebody who believes strongly in empowering women and getting women into leadership positions. I gave examples of same, spoke about the chief of staff, spoke about um, the immediate past um, chief justice, spoke about other women who have actually been given opportunities at this way by the president of the Republic of Ghana. And we all know how strong the president is when it comes to gender balance in the system, as it were. I spoke about it and again said that the press conference we had yesterday, let's not mistake this, let's not misconstrue this, let us not say things that of course never happened yesterday. What we sought to do yesterday was not against women and will never be against women as it were, no. But, but it's, it it's against about the leadership the leadership that women I, I, had given from time ago. Okay. The leadership staff. And of course, and, and we gave all these facts. I said those statements of facts we made yesterday, okay, cannot, I feel like, <laughs> be fought against. These are these are facts on the table. But, but, but come out, or not the, come out. If, if, yes. if you are judging by the quality, the allowances and all of that, the last time we checked, there are no textbooks in schools. That's a big failure. At least Jane and Opokwaji might ensure that textbooks were in schools. Oh, re really? Yes. But, but she didn't ensure that there were chalks in school. At least chalks were lacking. That's what is it? That, which 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 is the most important, the textbooks or the chalk? <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, you were just drawing my attention to textbooks, and I'm saying that at least chalks were lacking. So that's a statement of fact. Is that correct? The chalks were lacking throughout the country. <laughs> okay, that's fine. It means you have you have you have affirmed what I want to say. You see, the point I want to make here is that if we're going to look at the work done by this government in terms of ameliorating education in this country, or in terms of making education better and the work done by the then administration in terms of making education better. Clearly, you would agree with me that we have had cause to say that the future of the young ones in this country matter a lot. Okay. Why? Our flagship program, mm. our flagship policy, the free SHS, look at how it's been ruled, and look at how it has been welcomed by many parents out there, and in fact, even the people themselves. Look at how abysmal they came out to implement this secondary schools that they wanted to build, the 200 secondary schools. Were they able to do that? How many did they build before they exited? We said we're coming out with free SHS. Mm. Jane and Co. never believed in it. In fact, as a minister, did she believe in the free she, SHS? She thought it, it must be done progressively. Check, check your records. I'm saying that these were people who spoke against it. She said it must be done progressively. That, that I can remember. To the extent that not too long ago, the flag bearer of the NDC had calls to say that, look, we're spending so much money educating the young ones in this country at the detriment or to the detriment of the, um, the other areas. Of that... course, for me, I think that I think that I think that I think that mm -hmm. when it comes to education, when it comes to what we have done to make education better in this country. Clearly, the NDC comes nowhere near Okay, come on. Let, let me take a final bite and then go back to some. Uh, I digress a bit. Um, you are mentioning free SHS. The very first cohorts of the free SHS program are in school to write their final exam. And we do know the challenges of COVID-19. Uh, we are also picking indication that some parents are thronging to the schools to pick their children because they think they aren't safe enough. That will jeopardize the whole essence and this victory the Victory Party and their Kufuado students, as the president likes to call them, you know, <laughs> in, in the writing yeah, of the exam, don't you think? When you, when you end on this note with this question, that um, COVID-19 crisis, and if you like, the coronavirus crisis, um, might jeopardize or could jeopardize the gains made by the free SHS, as it were. I think you do not play, place the blame at the doorstep of the president. covid is a global issue. And we all know that COVID is a global issue. Mm. The crisis is a global crisis. We are all fighting to ensure that the protocols that have been laid down are observed. Mm. Of course, clearly, we are all safe, as it were. Yesterday, you asked a question about the 
students that have gone back to school. That's right. Okay, because of their exam. Mm. I cited a joint statement by the um, Ghana Education Service mm. and the Ghana Health Service as that's, well. That's right. And of course, these this statement came out to say that look, the protocols that have been laid down mm. or that are laid down indeed are supposed to be followed. Parents should not be apprehensive. Of course, no one is left out. Sickness is sickness. Sickness doesn't know NDC, doesn't know MPP. It doesn't know who is NDC's child and who is MPP's child. But they feel sickness their children are at risk and they could but, die. But of course, of course, I'm happy that the statement came out and I thought it was timely. And of course, to calm nerves and to let us ensure and to... Uh, ah, sorry about that. Kamal's uh, phone has frozen. Uh, Sam, are you, are you there? Yeah, Great. T take a bite on this one. Uh, Kamal insists by what he says, but I'm trying to dovetail into it. I, I'm, I put to him that the last time we checked, there were no textbooks in the schools. He says that, well, at least you lacked uh, chalk. You, pro you failed to provide chalk for the students. I'm dovetailing it into the third cohort of the free SHS program that the MPP so proudly boasts of. To say that the exam uh, may be jeopardized because now parents are demanding that their children come back to school, uh, come back home. What do you say? Johnny, I'm here. Yes, so what do you say? Johnny, can I well, continue? So, well, so I'm saying or, that... Or you want you well, want him to conclude? No, no. So I, I, I'm, I'm on to you now because uh, Etanam is ready to read a few messages. I'm on to you. Maybe a minute or two and then we'll go back to the messages. I'm saying that uh, Kamal insists that at least you failed to provide chalks, which the former uh, vice president's wife complained about. And I'm saying that the last time we checked, there were no textbooks in the schools. Well, that's a, a debate for another day unless you want to respond to that. But I'm saying that in relation to education, a ministry that Professor uh, previously held, the MPP insists that the free SHS is the best thing yet that ever happened to the, to the country. But as we speak, because of COVID-19, parents are thronging to the schools to withdraw their students from school because they think that they will not be safe in the schools. What's your bite on it as a former Deputy Minister for Education? So if I can quickly respond to some of the issues he raised, very quickly. Look, the Ghanaian people are interested in results, Johnny. Results. I have told you that Professor Nana Jinokukwe Chiman's BEC's performance during her tenure is the best in history. The WASI performance, best in history. During her tenure, we've put out a fact sheet supported by MS data on what she did. She provided 472,800 teacher notebooks, 653,700 plus attendance registers, 12.8 million core textbooks. Mm. Not like the current situation where children don't have textbooks to, 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 to study with. 2.5 million dictionaries, 4.9 million boxes of white chalk, and 180,000 boxes of colored chalk. So how come there were no chalks? And, and the teacher had to ask for it, and Matilda Misata said that chalk there would be. You never saw examinations being written on blackboards. It never happened. So how come there were no chalks? So how come there were no chalks? And the headmistress was complaining about it, and the wife of the vice president uh, says, keep quiet, you won't get a chalk. How come? If she provided all of these one, things. One, you know how many schools we have in Ghana? Tell you, me. You know how, how many how, how many schools we have? We have we have more than seventy thousand schools at the basic level. Mm. Over eight hundred senior high schools, mm -hmm. and then you have you have you have not less than sixty tertiary uh, institutions. The vice pres the former vice president's wife goes to one school, one school mm. Mm -hmm, out of over 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 sixty thousand schools. And so you can you want to use that to generalize, and people who, who could not even make arrangements for decent examinations, and and children had to had to write exams on the blackboard. I, I, I have have the, the audacity to question the sterling record, the 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 the, the, the unimpeachable track record of Professor Nanajin Obukwajima. I mean, it's it's really a big big. Joke. Look, what is happening now mm. with COVID-19? And Professor Obukwajiman has, 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 has said that the schools should not have been reopened. Why? Look, we have we have bundled this response to COVID-19. Mm. I mean, look at look at look look at all the all the all the blatant falsehoods. Mm. They, 
told us we, we had picked many weeks ago. H have we picked? We are still going up. Now they didn't talk about pick again. And when mm. the, when 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 your calf is 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 is, is on a trajectory that clearly shows that you have you have neither plateaued, mm. neither are you coming down. Your cases are going up. More people are dying, and the inf the, the the infection rate is is, is 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 still on an upward trajectory. What you do, what the scientists tell us, the public health, the epidemiologists tell us, is that you must still maintain restrictions. You don't ease restrictions. You don't put children in harm's way. They, they want to protect you remember, them. You remember I Just put the, out an article. The, I remember. I said, look, we can, we can think outside the box. There are mm. so many things we could have done. Look, continuous assessment is there that you can use. At the point of entry of tertiary institutions or whether they want to join the military or the police, they could write entrance examination. There are so many creative things that you do. In any case, why is Ghana being too? Why why is our, our government mm, mm. being too arrogant to make a U-turn? South Korea, when they opened schools and they saw that look, it wasn't going well, have become a disaster. They reclosed their schools. They, they, the government says the children will be protected. Charles Kingdom, Leicester. Chas, they, they, they reclose the school. Chas, to go home. Ghana Health now, Service. In Ghana, we are concealing. You don't talk to the teachers. They've told them, don't talk to the media. Keep quiet about it. When people test positive, don't broadcast it. And what you are doing, you you are going to have a situation of mass infection. The Ghana Health and, Service and, says and they have. Is what they is have. Going to take place. The Ghana Health Services, they have isolated the students who have tested positive, traced their contacts. Uh, they, they wrote that statement with the Ghana Education Service, so they will protect them. Char says they will protect them. What is your worry? The, our worry is the parents' worry. You saw the standoff at Accra girls. And why are they using police? Why are they preventing parents? Look, parents have their rights. We have, we have, we have... We have laws in this country. We have fundamental human rights. Mm -hmm. they, are, they, are, they are child right laws in this country. Parents have the right at any point they so deem wish to take their children out of school and, and, and make sure that their children okay. are not in harm's way. All right. We Thank should, you. We should allow parents to have a greater say mm. in the welfare of their children. Using brute force, the police shutting down schools and forcing parents to, to leave their, their campuses is not the solution. Thank you. Solution now is for Etanam to read a few messages for us on our WhatsApp uh, platform. My guest on uh, mm -hmm. phone and via Zoom is the Honorable Sam Wukujetua Blackwa. Right. He's the member of parliament for the North Tongue constituency. He's also a ranking member on foreign affairs uh, for the parliament of Ghana. And also Kamal Din Abdullah is a former uh, Nasara Youth Coordinator. He is also the uh, a, a, a Deputy National Communication Director of the NPP. Etanam. Right. A few messages this morning on WhatsApp. Uh, good morning, TV3. The nomination of Professor Jane Nano Pukwajma is a very victory to women in politics and teachers in general. I'm particularly happy as a teacher, God bless the NDC, for that very important move. It has won my vote already. Having Prof as Vice President, I know teachers will not do national service. Teachers will uh, be recruited straight from the college. No licensure exam, no 419 Alewa, and no quota system from Dan inside Ashanti Mampong in the Ashanti region. Good morning, TV3. Please remind them that uh, 2015, 2016, and 2017 batch of trained teachers are still home and posted. We have all the requirements to be posted, but they forcefully denied us. December 2020, we go show Nana. It's, it's, it's not shameful how MPP behaves when they set a standard for uh, someone and that same standard is used on their own and they're checking out. Let's do a decent politics this year devoid of personal attacks. Ephraim sent that uh, from uh, Shama Abusu. Uh, good morning, TV3. I'm so glad and say congratulations to Prof. Nana Upokwajima for her elevation. In fact, we can't continue to depend on economic doctors with data, yet our pockets are dry. We need uh, to change the practice, and we have a woman prof, NDC. Thank you, hashtag we go vote papa from Victor Rapture in home. Walanyo well, Inakwichia says, uh, uh, Prof. Jane Menza has nothing to add to the fortunes of the NDC. GM only picks her to share with her the shame that awaits him after December 7, 
2020. In 2012, Dr. Kwesi Indum uh, chose a woman ever local and the late as his running mate. And what happened? Dr. Abu Sakara also chose Sherita Sapong. And what happened? Hassan Ayariga chose Helen Matevi. And what happened? And in 1992, Kwabna Dako chose for Na Afali Sakifu as his running mate, but proved futile. So if uh, Mahama chooses a woman, what's the news about? The value will be same. Good morning, Johnny. I personally like your style of questioning. Keep it up, Albert Awogbo Akurigo. It's unfortunate and an insult on Ghanaian women for the MPP Director of Communications, Yabu Samwa, to say that former President Mahama's selection of a woman as a running mate means Mahama does not take Ghanaian electorate series. He should come out and apologize to Ghanaian women because women in Ghana also deserve some respect. Kofi Seidu has sent that. Good morning, Johnny and TV3. Today, all they can say is Prof. Jane cancelled teacher's allowance. Nothing more, nothing less. But today, the supposed economics Bruce Lee, Dr. Baumia, has now become an IT expert uh, because he has been overwhelmed by issues of the economy. The MPP now, they shake because uh, things are falling apart low. Uh, LOL, Fred uh, Bolga. Musa Abatwa in Kumasi says, the choice of Professor Jane Nano Pukwajima has really shown that John Mahama was poised to help Ghana people uh, people of Ghana. Her biography and track record speaks volume. She's God-fearing, distinguished scholar, conscientious public servant, role model, and she doesn't have any questionable character when she was heading education ministry. She discharged her duty in the professional manner. However, I'm totally convinced this is a winning ticket come December 7. Inshallah. Hashtag John Mahama Jino Pukwajima for 2020. That's a very uh, last one, and there we go. Good morning, Johnny, uh, to you and your guests. My regards to Mr. Kyle Madin, JM appointment of Nanopoku. It's not a new, uh, it's no news. It's a political landscape of NDC. NDC uh, know very well that they can't win 2020 election, so they must choose someone who has no political future in their pe party. Those who were fit for the running mate position will not waste their time as GM running mates from Mohammed. Uh, Ibrahim Abido. This is the very last one. Good morning, Johnny. Former President John Mahama has made my day yesterday by selecting a female vice presidential candidate who will be the first female vice president in the history of this country. And we in the Zongos are ever ready to work hand in hand with her and make sure we grab the seat of the presidency in the hand of this incompetent leaders. Inshallah. Ismail Ahuruya Ali. Thank you. That. That's enough. Most grateful for your time. Kamal, you take the final bite on this one. And regarding the school uh, issue, somebody uh, says that, well, the president who asks that the school children return to school is self-isolating on medical advice. The education minister who supervises education in this country, uh, a woman, a man who holds a position that Professor Jane Anopokwajima previously held, is also uh, at the University of Ghana Medical Center. The two key people who have asked the children to go to school are keeping themselves safe. Why shouldn't the children go home too? Why, are, are the children all positive? You tell me. The, the parents don't the want point, the children the in school. If, if the, excuse me, if that's the argument somebody wants, is seeking to advance. I have a simple question, whether the students who are asked to go back to school are all positive. The answer is actually not so. The answer is no, they are not positive. Those who are positive, even the statement we read yesterday, if someone is tested positive, clearly the person is isolated and quarantined. That's clear. So must we, must we wait for all of them to be positive before? No, no, no. That is why testing is ongoing, and that is why this country has put in measures in place to ensure that protocols are observed so that we can curb this menace of COVID-19. The I testing think. centers don't have, they don't have consumables. Noguchi is complaining. KCCR is complaining. Well, well, well Johnny, 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 those are the challenges. Those are challenges that you can, you can point to. But nonetheless, the president of the Republic of Ghana has not actually... Oh, sorry. Uh, maybe some. Uh, let's work. Let's work you up finally with your final. Okay, come on, come on, is back. Well, come, uh, Sam, you take the final word. Thirty seconds for you. What's on your mind as we close? And I'm, I'll put the same question to you. The president. I am surprised today. The NDC believes in inclusive democracy. I am hmm. surprised. You are surprised. Okay, uh, Harry, hold on for me. Let's uh, connect with Sam. Sam, your final thoughts. Hello, Sam. 
Well, we lost Sam Okujeto Black on the line. Uh, Kamal, I thank you very much for your time. Most grateful. And let's.